Right, so the next uh, polynomials part is basically using it in terms of a context. Okay, so we can use it to find the points of intersection of a graph uh, of a polynomial and the axis. Uh, and I think further in this lesson, we're going to use it to find the points of intersection between two different um, graphs of polynomials. Okay, but they're virtually the same thing. It's just at the end of the day, we want to make them equal to each other. We we'll to, want to make something equal to something. And obviously, if it crosses the axis, we already know what happens. Okay, so if a, if a line crosses the x-axis, then y equals 0. And if a line crosses the y-axis, then x equals 0. So this basically just gives us something else or some other means of drawing a graph of these different things. Okay. So to find a point at which a quadratic, um, for example, y equals x squared minus 5x plus 6 cuts the x-axis, we'd substitute um, a y for the 0, or we'd put a 0 in for the y, and then we'd factorise, okay, x equals 3 or 2, uh, and we'd get the points. And the same basically applies for a, synth, uh, for a polynomial of a higher order, higher degree, sorry. So um, all we want to do is basically factorise in the way that we've been doing, uh, and then set it all equal to 0. Okay, so I mentioned a few times it was going to happen. Uh, these are the ones to look out for. So virtually the same question, it's just there's going to be one little bit extra at the end. So determine the points at which the graph of y equals x squared minus 2, x squared minus x plus 2 intersects the x and the y axis. Okay, so if it's gonna, if we're going to work out where it crosses the y axis, then x is 0. That's easy enough, because all the x's just become 0, just leaving us with a 2 at the end. Okay, in which case it means the y axis is 0, 2. That's straightforward enough. When it crosses the x axis, then y equals 0, in which case the whole equation equals 0. And that's a bit more difficult. This is where we would need synthetic division. Okay, and we want to factorize this fully. Okay, so same idea as before. We don't know any factors just now, so we're going to try and find one. So I've used one again, and one does work here. This won't always work. It's worked in the first the three examples I've used so far, but it won't always work. So you just need to keep going until you get zero, um, or get it equal to zero, uh, which this one does. So since y equals zero, when x equals one, x minus one is a factor, and then we can use that to find any other factors. Okay. So we've got the coefficients along the top, 1, minus 2, minus 1, and 2, and then I'm dividing by 1, okay, 1 is my factor, so I'm starting with the 1, and I'm times it by 1, 1 times 1 is 1, not 2, 1 plus minus 2 is minus 1, times by 1 is minus 1, add on minus 1 is minus 2, times by 1 is minus 2, add on 2 is 0, which we already knew would happen, but the idea, again, is to get the coefficients from the quotient. In other words, when we divide by x minus 1, we get 1x squared minus 1x minus 2, Okay, as written here, and then we factorize that a little bit further, x minus 1, x minus 2, x plus 1. Right, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find where this crosses the x-axis, in which case when this all equals 0, and we factorized it now, so we make it the x minus 1, x minus 2, x plus 1 equal to 0, and then we solve it, okay? Same as before, either x minus 1 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. If x minus 1 equals 0, then x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals minus 1, and that gives us points 1, 0, 2, 0, and minus 1, 0. So just be careful how you write it. If it's asking you to, to solve it, then it's just 1, 2, and minus 1. If it's asking you to find where it crosses the axis, then we need coordinates. Okay, a polynomial can be factorized into a general form. So this um, determines the function of a polynomial from its graph. Uh, I forgot we did this one. Okay, so in a general sense, that's what your polynomials look like. So we've got in a cubic... Okay, it's going to be three brackets, okay, with potentially a number in front, okay, but it'll be x minus something, x minus something, x minus something. Obviously, it could be pluses, but that would just be dictated by it with a value of a. Okay, so what this tells us, if it's it, when we get it into this form, so it's just basically the reverse of what we just did. A, B, and C are the roots, in other words, are the points where it meets the x-axis, and k is a value that affects the amplitude. So just like we've always done, okay, if you had 2 sine x, 2x squared, it stretches the graph up and down. Okay, so that's all that k is going to do. So we just need to consider that as well. So given this, we can take any graph of a polynomial and determine the equation. Okay, from the graph, as long as we know the roots and probably one other point. Okay. So I've mentioned this a couple of times, this idea of repeated roots, but it means something. We've seen it a few times, basically when we have two roots the same. Okay, so if you had x minus 2, x minus 2, and if it was repeated, that's what we mean in this case. Um, but... We can kind of look back at quadratics and work out what it means. So if we have y equals x minus 2 squared, um, what that is is the graph of y equals x squared shifted 2 to the right. Okay, so something like this. So it's moved across and then we've got the turning point at 2, 0. But that's also um, obviously the point at which it hits the x-axis. Okay, but the point is it's not crossing the x-axis. Right, so we can think of this as x minus 2 times by x minus 2. Okay, and as we know, as can be seen there, there's, a, uh, there's only the one root, okay, so when x equals 2. But what this is, is a repeated root, okay. 
So what this then tells us is that when we have a repeated root like this, okay, it's actually a turning point, okay? And this still applies when we've got cubics and quartics and everything above that, okay? <clears throat> so when you see a repeated root like this, what it tells you is it's a turning point on the x-axis. And this is important to look out for so in order to actually draw the equation of a line, or sorry, get the equation of a line from the graph, okay? So important thing there, repeated roots means it's a turning point on the x-axis, okay? Right, and this applies for polynomials too, and that's going to help us. So we have a graph here, and uh, not that this that fact actually applies, but I'm going to use one in a second. So what we want to do is determine an expression for f of x from the graph y equals f of x. Okay, so we're going to take this, and we're going to uh, basically find the equation of it. Okay, so we've got lots of points here. It's not the greatest looking uh, graph with all these decimals. But what the first thing we want to do, if we're going to do this in reverse, and again, you can see this looks slightly similar to questions we've done before. Okay, but we're just trying to determine the equation of it. So what we know from this is we know the roots. We know the points where it crosses the x-axis, okay? In other words, x equal to minus 2, x equal to positive 1, and positive 2. And we can write this. We can write this basically as our equation because we know from what we've done before, we can find the roots from the equation by factorizing it. So in the same way, we can basically find the roots or, or the factors as x plus 2, x minus 1, and x minus 2. Okay, but the problem is they would be the roots regardless of what the amplitude was. Okay, so if this was stretched up by 10, okay, they would still be the same roots. And what we need to look at next is the fact that there could be some value k multiplying this graph. In other words, changing the amplitude because it wouldn't actually change the points on the x-axis. Okay, so there could be some value k multiplying by all of these um, different factors. Here, okay. Right, so in order to find this, we wanted to pick another point, right? Don't pick one of the points that you've just done, because all that's going to happen is it's going to make this equal to zero. If you pick minus two, then this becomes minus two plus two, which is zero, in which case the whole thing's zero, in which case k would just appear to be zero, okay? So you have to pick another point on the line. So you might be given one, or you might just have to spot one. So it's often good to find the one that's on the y-intercept. For anything else, then x is equal to zero at that point, okay? So we substitute in that into the formula with the k, because we're going to just see if k, if there is a value for k. k might equal one, but we need to determine that uh, for definite. So when um, we've got the point zero minus four, then the y is obviously minus four, the x's are all zeros, and we can multiply this through to see if we've got a value for k. So this just becomes two minus one and minus two. Two times minus one times by minus two is minus four. Um, sorry, positive 4, in which case minus 4 equals 4k, in which case k equals minus 1. Okay, so there was a value of k, uh, it is minus 1, and all that's in theory done is flip the graph, but we don't necessarily know that instantly by looking at it, okay, and we don't know if it's been stretched. So the actual equation of this is f of x equals minus x plus 2, x minus 1, x minus 2, okay? All right, so a similar one again this time, we've just got the graph, we're going to determine the uh, equation of it. So we want to start with the roots. However, what we've got to be very, very careful of here is what we have is the fact that we've got a turning point on the x-axis. So this is what I was talking about at the start. So what that means is there's a repeated root, okay? So it appears that the roots are just minus 2 and 1, but the thing is that minus uh, well, positive 1 is a turning point, okay? Which, as I say, is a repeated root. So we have these two, um, as, as I say, repeats x plus 2, x minus 1, x minus 1, okay? So when we write the equation, it would be y equals k x plus 2 x minus 1 x minus 1. Okay, so just look out for that. When there's a turning point on the x-axis, it means it's a repeated root, in which case the kind of the coordinate of that is just basically repeated. Okay, and then again, we need to find out what k is. So we take another point. We've got this point here across the y-axis, which is 0, 4. Substitute it in. Work it all through. That just gives us 2k. So 4 equals 2k and k equals 2. That's our final equation as f of x equals 2 bracket x plus 2 x minus 1 x minus 1. Okay. Uh, yeah, you could simplify that. You won't lose any or gain any marks for doing that. Um, you'll be absolutely fine with that first one. But that's the idea. It's x minus 1 squared. So again, if you see this situation in reverse, what it's going to tell you, if you see something like x minus 1 squared, it's going to tell you that this graph has a turning point on the x-axis. Okay? And it's at where x equals 1. Okay? Right, so the final little part of this is to determine the point of intersection of a curve in a line. Right? It works, works exactly the same as the first one. Okay? Um, but we're not trying to find where it crosses the x-axis now, we're trying to find where it meets the line. Okay, but the reason we use, we know uh, we use a zero when it crosses the x-axis is because that's the actual equation of the x-axis. So y equals zero is that equation. If you're trying to find the, where it meets crosses this line, we just use the equation of this line. Okay, and we substitute it in instead of zero, and then we just simplify it a little bit. So we're going to determine the coordinates of the points which the line y equals 2x plus 5, the points, determine the coordinates of the points which the line, yeah, that doesn't make sense. Anyway, 
y equals 2x plus 5 intersects a graph of y equals x cubed minus 17x minus 25. Okay, <clears throat> right, so they'll intersect when they equal one another. In other words, when 2x plus 5 equals x cubed minus 7x minus 25. So it's when the y's are equal, in which case the rest of it's equal. Okay, All right, you don't want to solve it like that. You don't want to try and solve it like that. We want everything to one side equal to 0. So take away 2x, you get minus 19x. Take away 5, you get minus 30. And then this is the equation that we're trying to solve. And if we're going to solve a, a cubic like this, then we need to factorize it. If we're going to factorize it, then we use synthetic division. If we use synthetic division, then we already need to know a factor. Right. If you're given an equation like this, or if you're given a graph like this, you might be able to see kind of certain points where it does intersect. Okay. So if you're looking closely here, you can probably actually see the points where it, where it crosses, which can help you. Because basically you can see they don't cross at 1. So they're crossing at what looks to me about 3, or minus 3, sorry. What looks to me about minus 2, and what is probably going to be about 5. Okay. So if there is a graph, use it to help you. X equals minus 2 looks a fair bit for where they meet. Remember, this is not where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, that might be a different question, but this is where the blue line meets the red line, which looks to be about minus 2. Okay, so let's just double check anyway. Minus 2 cubed, minus 19 times 10 minus 2, minus 30 does equal 0, in which case um, x equals minus 2, um, or x plus 2 is a factor. Okay, so then we've got our basis for our synthetic division. So the coefficients along the top, just be very careful, is this one we're going back to, which is 1, 0, minus 19, and minus 30. Okay, and we've got the minus 2. Um, so it's 1 times by minus 2, it's minus 2, plus the 0 is minus 2, plus the minus 2 is 4, plus the minus 19 is minus 15, times by minus 2 is 30, add on the minus 30 is 0. Okay. When x is 3, f of 3 equals 140. Uh, I just read that out, that's absolutely nothing to do with what we're doing. I've obviously copied and pasted that from somewhere. So that should say when x is minus 2, f of minus 2 equals 0. I've literally copied and pasted that from ages ago. Okay. So what that allows us to do is factorize the rest. So using these coefficients uh, of our quotients, we've got x squared minus 2x minus 15. Okay. And obviously we've taken out the x plus 2 already. So make sure you write that. And that all equals 0. And then we can factorize the rest. x plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. Just as we thought x equals minus 2, x equals minus 3, and x equals 5. Right, but the problem is they're just the x values of where they meet, so we need to find the y values now. But bear in mind these are on both equations, so they're on both lines, so you're much better off using the simpler one. It will work for both of them, assuming we've done everything correctly, okay, no matter which one we substitute these points into to find y, it wouldn't matter, but obviously this one's easier to do with. So when x equals minus 2, y will equal 2 of our minus 2s plus 5, which is minus 4 plus 5, which is 1. When x is minus 3, y is going to equal minus 1. And when x equals 5, y is going to equal 15, which gives us our three points, minus 2, 1, minus 3, minus 1, and 5, 15. And again, you can kind of use the graph to just double check that they're um, along the right lines. Okay? So don't be put off by the fact that there's two lines. You're still just getting them equal to each other at the start, and then you're just making the whole equation equal to 0 on one side. Okay?